This is section 79 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Waterson and Twain as Rebels by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Address at the celebration of Abraham Lincoln's 92nd birthday anniversary, Carnegie Hall, February 11, 1901. To raise funds for the Lincoln Memorial University at Cumberland Gap, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, the remainder of my duties as presiding chairman here this evening are but two, only two. One of them is easy, and the other difficult. That is to say, I must introduce the orator, and then keep still and give him a chance. The name of Henry Waterson carries with it its own explanation. It is like an electric light on top of Madison Square Garden. You touch the button and the light flashes up out of the darkness. You mention the name of Henry Watterson, and your minds are at once illuminated with the splendid radiance of his fame and achievements. A journalist, a soldier, an orator, a statesman, a rebel. Yes, he was a rebel. And, better still, now he is a reconstructed rebel. It is a curious circumstance, a circumstance brought about without any collusion or prearrangement, that he and I, both of whom were rebels related by blood to each other, should be brought here together this evening, bearing a tribute in our hands, and bowing our heads in reverence to that noble soul who for three years we tried to destroy. I don't know as the fact has ever been mentioned before, but it is a fact, nevertheless. Colonel Waterson and I were both rebels, and we are blood relations. I was a second lieutenant in a Confederate company for a while, Oh, I could have stayed on if I had wanted to. I made myself felt. I left tracks all around the country. I could have stayed on. But it was such weather. I never saw such weather to be out of doors in, in all my life. The colonel commanded a regiment, and did his part, I suppose, to destroy the Union. He did not succeed. Yet, if he had obeyed me, he would have done so. I had a plan, and I fully intended to drive General Grant into the Pacific Ocean, if I could get transportation. I told Colonel Waterson about it. I told him what he had to do. What I wanted him to do was to surround the Eastern Army and wait until I came up. But he was insubordinate. He stuck on some quibble of military etiquette about a second lieutenant giving orders to a colonel or something like that. And what was the consequence? The Union was preserved. This is the first time I believe that that secret has ever been revealed. No one outside of the family circle, I think, knew it before. But there the facts are. Waterson saved the Union. Yes, he saved the Union. And yet there he sits and not a step has been taken or a movement made toward granting him a pension. That is the way things are done. It is a case where some blushing ought to be done. You ought to blush, and I ought to blush. And he, well, he's a little out of practice now. End of Waterson and Twain as Rebels by Mark Twain Read by John Greenman